Hello um, guys, you are welcome to this lesson. Um, here we want to um, want to touch on what injective or a one-to-one -one function is. Um, in other words, giving a function, let's say uh, from a set X, with X to um, a set Y, and you have a function that maps F to X. When we say that F is one-to-one, -one, uh, well, as the name denotes, uh, means that given any two elements, x1 and x2 here, these guys must map to one and only one element in the set y. So let's say that it maps, this maps to, uh, let's call it y1. And then this must map to a separate element here, y, y2. Okay. So, um, no two elements match to the same element. If that happens, you say that the function is one to one. So, um, you can also think about it this way. So you have f mapping elements from big X to big Y. We say that f is one to one if, if these guys are separate. You have two separate elements, x1, x2, right not equal, they are real x1 not equal to x2 as long as they are separate you expect that their um, functional values their functional values will be different as well okay so that is a formal definition of a function being one to one if these two elements in the set big y big x sorry if these are separate or different then their functional values their values they take on here Remember that the value that x1 takes here can also be represented by f of x1, right? And this is f of x2. If these are separate, we expect that this will be different as well. If that happens, then the function f is 1 to 1. On the other hand, you can also think about it this way. If f of x1 is equal to f of x2, if they are equal, then this must be equal. Then x1 has to be equal to x2. Okay, so that is all we mean by a function being one to one. Uh, graphically, one to one functions are functions that are either increasing or they are decreasing. Okay, so let's take an example of an increasing function. Suppose there is this function uh, is increasing this way, straight line or curve. This is f, uh, that is x, uh, given x1 here, the value of the function is going to be f of x1, right? And suppose that I have x2 here, it is going to give me f of x2, okay? So as long as these two elements are not the same, these guys should be different. If that is the case, f is one to one. And you can imagine that as this gets closer to this, suppose x2 moves here, then f2 will have to move here. If it moves here, then this has to move here. If x2 becomes x1, then f of x2 must be equal to f of x1. Okay? And so that is that definition. So oftentimes, you, you can either use this definition of the one-to-one -one function, or this one to determine, giving a function to determine whether that function is one to one or not. Okay, so we'll look at a couple of examples. Let's, um, let's, uh, let me get rid of this. Let's look at um, a few of these. Okay, so suppose you want to show, so examples, let's say one, show that show that the function f of x let's take uh let's say 2x plus whatever six show that this is injected or one how do you do that well you can use one of the definitions so let's start with x this is usually uh, easier more intuitive to apply so the solution um, so let x1 and x2 be 
real, then f of x1 is equal to f of x2 implies that, okay, we want to show that if f of x1 is equal to x2, if we are able to show that x1 is equal to x2, strictly, okay, if we are able to show that, then that proves that the function is one-to-one. -one. So x1 must be equal to x2 and not anything else, all right? Now, f of x1 here, um, I put x1 into here, so wherever I see x, I put in x1, so that is 2x1 plus 6 is equal to f of x2, wherever I see x, I put in um, x2 plus 6, okay? So I have that, let's solve this. Uh, let me get rid of that, okay? So now, from here, it's positive 6, positive 6, they cancel out, and so I have 2x1 is equal to 2x2, this guy cancels out this, so that x1 is equal to x2. So, if f of x1 is equal to f of x2, we have shown that x1 is equal to x2, therefore, therefore, the function f is injective. Okay, it's one to one. Um, you could have shown this or proved this using the, um, the other definition. Remember, the other one says that if um, x1 is not equal to x2, then f of x1 must not be equal to f of x2. Okay? So you can do it using this definition as well. As I said, that is usually not as intuitive, um, but you can still do it. So what you do in that case, so this is an alternative way of proving that it is one to one. What you do is this. So, um, so you do the same thing, pick your x1 and x2, and then let's suppose that x1 is equal to x2. Sorry, not, okay, so this is what I want to So suppose x1 is not equal to x2, okay? So we want to end up showing that f of x1 is not equal to f of x2. If not, then there's a contradiction, right? Okay, so now, then we go f of x1 equals f of x2 implies that we've already proved this, all right, from here. 2x1 plus 6 is equal to 2x2 plus 6. 2's cancel out, I mean 6 cancel out, 2 cancels out, and then x1 is equal to x2. But note, we suppose that x1 here, we suppose that x1 should not be equal to x2. So if we are getting x1 to be equal to x2, that is a contradiction, it's contradicting this. Which means that this, where we started from, this is not correct, this is wrong, if you like. And so this means that f of x1 must not be equal to f of x2. So this implies that, you can say that, therefore, or hence, f of x, well, let me, let me see the problem. Let me see the problem. So I will say that this contradicts, right? Contradicts the assumption or the fact that x1 is not equal to x2. Therefore, f of x1 is not equal to f of x2. Hence, f is rejected. You see? So this is the an alternative way of proving. You start, with, you start by supposing that x1 is not equal to x2, and then you suppose that this is equal to this. You end up showing that x1 is equal to x2, but that is a contradiction, which means that f of x1 must not be equal to f of x2, and that satisfies this. Therefore, f is, um, is injective, okay? All right. Let's move on to um, a second example. All right, let's do that. Um, one more um, 
example here. Determine whether, determine, all right, example two, determine whether f of x is equal to, let's say, 3x squared is injected. All right? So what do you do? We'll do the same thing. Let's, let's try to see whether it is one-to-one -one or not. So um, again, you choose x1, x2, real, then f of x1 is equal to f of x2 implies that implies that um, so plug x1 and x2 into the into the equation the function here so this implies that 3x1 squared is equal to 3 so that is f of x1 f of x2 will be 3 x2 squared right okay now here the 3 cancel out which implies that x1 squared is equal to x2 squared Solve for x1, take the square root, so this implies that x1, remember the square root, plus or minus, plus or minus, square root of x2 squared. Square root of x2 squared is x2, therefore x1 is plus or minus x2. So x1 is equal to x2, or, okay, or x1 is equal to negative. So x1 is not strictly equal to x2. It could be this or it could be that. All right? But for it to be one to one, if f of x1 is equal to f of x2, we expect that x1 must strictly be equal to f of x2. So because of this, we conclude that f is not one to one. Okay? Hence, f is not injected. Or not one to one. All right. So that is how you prove that a function is uh, one to one or not. Um, in the next video, I'm going to do one on suggestive or onto uh, functions. All right. So I'll be right back.